What a crazy week of space as Starship outperforms its last test flight a few months ago that exploded during its final phases of ascent. We also have some news on a recent rocket explosion that happened in Japan this week. More on this in a bit. This is your Space Pod for March 16th, 2024. The IFT-3 test flight of Starship SN-28 and Booster 10 lifted off flawlessly from the pad at Boca Chica Starbase in Texas. This launch occurred at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time with all 33 Raptors firing furiously. This launch had too many cool moments, so we are going to break these down during the footage. The first thing to note is that the flames from the engines are longer than the rocket itself. I cannot claim to have seen this on any rocket ever. Of course, look at this insane onboard footage of the full stack ascending, showing the Earth below. If you think that is crazy, just wait. The first stage cutoff occurred at around T plus two, 2 minutes and 42 seconds, and this view of the separation is nothing short of breathtaking. The hot staging is working just as planned here. This marks the progress point of going forward into the mission to where, in the last test flight, the ship failed to light its engines and the booster exploded. So now we come down to Booster 10's booster soft water landing at around 40 kilometers. Now these Raptors failed to ignite, so you can probably see where this is going. Then just as the booster got too close to the two kilometer mark, the boosters finally lit some of the engines, but not all that would been, have been necessary to properly slow the vehicle down for a hover slam. If you look closely here, a strange engine combination is relit, and this would not seem to be a nominal outcome. Now I am no rocket scientist, but if the math checks out, the engines should have lit around 65,000 kilometers, and also six engines should have been the minimum needed to slow the booster down for landing. So I'm not sure what, what was the deal with the three engines. We did lose contact with the booster just after a thousand meters. So we can safely say that splash and bam. Now back to the ship in orbit. Yes, I did say orbit. This would finally meet one of the important milestones of the mission. Also making it the largest spacecraft ever launched into Earth orbit. But however, now the orbit wasn't stable for reasons of uh, the engines not relighting uh, to deorbit itself into a controlled descent. Here comes another money shot right here. Look at this. This was never mentioned anywhere on the internet, but this cargo bay door opening is, opening is extreme science right here. The amount of data that the SpaceX team can gather during the events like these is staggering. Unfortunately, and, and as I predicted, the ship did not uh, relight its Raptor engines. Additionally, the ship started to roll in a strange way. This means the ship will be descending in accidental ways but we can test those hydro controlled fins, right? We can now see here where the ship no longer has attitude control thrust thrusters either. The ship starts to entangle with the early parts of the atmosphere and the tumbling starts to increase. The orientation of the ship seems to connect with the uh, heat shield side facing the ass end of the drag. The plasma heating is one of the last amazing shots here. Actually, this is an understatement. Look at this. The ship continues to descend and surprisingly, the metal side facing the heat has not caused any issues yet. However, this is mostly due to a concept called volumetric surface heat emission. Basically the fact that the ship's huge size is using its surface area to its advantage and how long the skin of the ship can withstand the heating. Just around the 65,000 kilometer mark and altitude, we lose contact with the ship and that is pretty much how I thought this mission would go down. So basically my prediction went down like this, that it was Starship was going to get into orbit, but it was going to end with an uncontrolled descent. Hopefully the fourth test mission allows both the booster and the ship to soft land, but also at their specified targets. So now more on that rocket from Japan. A Japan-based startup Space One failed, to, failed Wednesday to become Japan's first private firm to put a satellite into orbit after its solid fuel Karyos rocket burst into flames just five seconds after liftoff. The rocket is called Kairos, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and it was carrying a mock-up of a government spy satellite. The mission lifted off from uh, this new space facility located in Kushimoto, uh, Wakayama Prefecture, shortly after 11 a.m. local time. 
Space One stated they are investigating the cause of the explosion, but remain committed to the, star, to the startup goal of undertaking 20 launches a year by the end of 2029. If this week was not exploding enough for you, I don't know what is. We are planning a full show in the next few weeks, so stay patient. We have some exciting and crazy things coming up. I am your host, Chad, and I will see you out on the launch pad. What a crazy week. Oh gosh, there is a launch. There is an actual launch. Space pod. This is a Falcon 9 Starlink mission. That's the main engine cut off. All right. Hey, let's get back inside and finish the space pod, shall we? Okay, that something we don't see every day is a mission that just went off. It's just as I started recording on the video for this space pod, and then there's an actual launch. You're not going to get this type of content anywhere else on the internet. So with that said, I'm actually going to get back into uh, finish setting up. I just, I have to get my microphone and everything going. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. Don't go away. <laughs> 